Hello and welcome to a, a science lesson in which students are expected to design, uh, give a front view, a outside view, and then a schematic view of a flashlight that they design. Um, their flashlights are going to be uh, much more complicated and interesting than this one. We did something that was very basic and very simple just to give you an idea on how to do it. So we have a schematics diagram up here where it shows, and we did it in red so we can show the pathway of energy. Um, and then uh, through the flashlight, then we've got an outside view and then a front view. So that's what's expected of you. Students are given a flashlight template, and if you're at Don Ross Secondary School, you go to a Common Assignments uh, Science and then great there's a folder for nine and inside there there's a uh, an assignment called flash flashlight assignment template and you just open that and then make sure you save it in your own file because you won't be able to make any saves in the common drive because that is a read only access for students now let's just get started I'm not gonna do the whole thing but I'm gonna show you on how we do it. now these batteries are all made to scale so if you're going to use these batteries, you try not to resize them uh, because we made them to scale. So then your flashlight will fit accordingly. And it is kind of nice to use. Um, this is set up in centimeters here. So if you don't have that, you can go view and show rulers. Right now it says hide rulers because they're up. You can also go edit and preferences and uh, you know units and display performance so you can change all these things if you want to change that but you definitely want to see your rulers and we're using centimeters so anyways how do you draw objects first of all we started with a simple rectangle tool and remember you can click and drag but if you click and drag any of these shape objects any of these ones that fit in here with the shift key held it'll make it to an exact size if you want it to start in the center and move out, you can do the same thing by holding the shift and the alt key, and then it starts from the center and goes out. So those are two useful techniques. The shift key with the click and drag on the object tool, and remember, click and hold to see all the different objects. You can also draw objects. Now, for drawing the schematics, or the wires, we went like this. Just click with your pen tool, then click, then click, then click. If you want to stop and move to a new section, you can go click, 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 click. You can move however you want. And the great thing is, if you don't like how you drew it, you don't have to redraw it. You just grab the white arrow tool, select a point by clicking on it. You can tell it's selected by it being blue. Then you can move it with your arrow keys or click and drag it with your white arrow tool. But I like to use, if you're just doing fine points, the arrow keys is really handy to do that. Now, the other thing you can do is if you didn't want it to be on a straight line, like a 90 degree, and you wanted a curve on it, you can add a curve by just clicking on this convert angler. And then these handles determine how the curve works. Really important to understand that, okay? So you can change anything you want that way. Now, shapes. How do you put them together? I'm just going to get rid of these pieces. Oh, and these pieces shouldn't have any fill. So how would you change that? You can just bring the fill forward and turn the fill off. Now, if I wanted to make shapes combined, you're going to need to watch how to do this. So start first of all, I started like this. Then. If I grab a black arrow tool and I grab these two pieces, what's really nice is you can use the align panel up here. And the align, you can just align it this way, which is not the way I wanted to align it. Or you can align it center that way. Now this panel is a little bit different in, in the different CS versions. But you know, if you can't find a panel, you can always find it through here, window and align. So no matter what version, you can find all these panels or palettes, whatever you want to call them, through here. 
So whether you're in CS2 or CS to CS6, you can find those things from here. Now, they're nice and lined up. And I would like mine to go down at an angle to here and down at an angle to here. So to do that, like right now, I only have one, two, three, four points. I need to add some points. So I'm going to add a point here. And you do that with the Add Anchor tool. Add Anchor. Click, and you got to click right on the point. This is what it says if you miss, if you're not right on the segment. So you just say OK, and then you try again, and you get right on the point. Now, you can tell which one is selected. It's this one because it's blue and the rest are white. And then I can just hit my arrow key. And I can go over top of it. And then I can hit my arrow key. And you can try and line it up perfectly. Now, this all looks well and good, but they don't combine properly, right? It's got a line, and we would like to get rid of that white line. So one of the ways to do that is to grab, select them both, and then you need the Pathfinder tool. So you go Window and Pathfinder. And from here, you can Add Shape to Area. And then you click away, and there it is. Now, I also put a switch on, and watch how I made a switch. I clicked and I grabbed a rounded rectangle tool. And then I clicked and made another rounded rectangle tool. Okay, and I just moved the top one kind of into position. And then again, I went to the Pathfinder, and I said, add shape to area. And now it's starting to look good. Then I went here, put it halfway down, and then I went add shape to area. And there you go. That's how you put a switch on. Okay? You already have this. And remember, these two pieces are grouped. If you want to ungroup them, you can go Control Shift G to break them apart. And you can use that and use that. And so that's the spring to hold the battery in tight. Then I just took two of these took the spring, went right there, brought that there, resized it so it was just slightly bigger, and again you can center them. Now why can't you see the spring? Because the spring is in the back, so you just gotta go right click, arrange, and send to back if you want. Then you'll take this, control C and control V, and put it ahead head and again if you want them to line up perfectly you can use the align section and align them top or you could align them center either way works now obviously my you know flashlights way too big here so then I could reduce it make it a little smaller and then I used again I used a pen tool just to draw your section and I often use these grids because they're very handy to make sh things kind of symmetrical. And I put no fill. And then this light needs to fit in it. So it needs a little area. So then I use the Add Anchor tool again. And I just went click there, click in there, click there. And click there. So I added quite a few little ones. And then I take this thing. And you can either rotate it by going on the corner, near the corner, or you can go object, transform, and rotate. And then I know I can tell it to rotate either 90 degrees or 270, depending on which way it turns. That's the wrong way, so I need 270. And then this can fit right there. Now you'll see in a moment why I put the points there. I'm just going to click over here and that point can go there now. That point can go. Now that's a little hard for you to see. So don't forget about this. You've got a magnifying tool that you can zoom in or you can use your keystrokes which is control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. I'll just go control plus 
Then I can take this tool and I'll use my down arrow key. And that arrow key and then if I go control minus this section can all fit in here eventually. Then I use my pen to draw my lines and again changing the color of lines. You're not on the fill here, you need to stroke forward to change the color of lines. And I'm getting pretty close to being done my schematic. I could move this into here. Obviously it's a bit big, so I could go Shift and Alt key to move it from the center. And I can use my arrow keys to move it backwards. And it's starting to fit pretty close. And then I'm going to just draw, use shapes and pen tools to draw the extra little sections. And when you're done, the suggestion would be you group it. Now, the other thing is, how do you do, how did we do the front? The front was pretty easy. Just use Shift and Alt key, holding your ellipse tool. Did it again, so you got the outside. And you do it again to put the light in the middle. Then you can start coloring things. You know, that could be filled with this color. And you could use the gradient tool to change the sections on the gradient. If you ever lose things here, it's really handy to just to go Window, Workspace, and Basic, and it brings it back to your default. But here's the gradient. So that's interesting. This gradient might look cooler if it was. Show your options. And I put my linear this one might be better as a radial okay and it might be better with white on the outside and dark on the inside because then this one piece we might just make white and this one we might do yellow for a light or we could do a gradient there's all kinds of swatches down here with gradient swatches and simple simple radials is a good one to use for lights and if you want to put in a red light you could do that there so there you have it using most of your shape tools your pen tool but this is not which is your regular pen tool plus your add anchor tool occasionally you might want to get rid of an anchor so you use your delete anchor tool um, then you got to know how to color both fill and stroke and possibly add some text if you want to give you know a little legend and tell what what the different uh, parts of the diagram are about and we'll just go back for a very short moment to look more at a finished version of it then probably would even go in and delete these batteries and parts that i don't need so i could make them bigger if i wanted to if you want more details, you can always email me at school or uh, email your science teacher to find out more details on the assignment. This is basically the technical way you can use Adobe Illustrator to draw diagrams. Thanks for watching.